Brazilian Muay Thai stylist Anderson Silva has knocked a whole bunch of guys out in his career, but few would forget the spectacular knockout in the UFC of Vitor Belfort using a rear leg push kick. Like we said, second to none. Oh! He front kicked him in the face! Absolutely right! Trying to finish! It oh! is all Straight out of the Muay Thai fight book. I decided to travel down and meet my friend Rich Cadden, two-time world champion, who's going to show us how he achieved such a spectacular knockout. Whilst I know a whole bunch of guys who could have shown me the kick that knocked out Vitor Belfort, Rich Cadden is a special kind of coach. He breaks things down in a detailed manner, he's trained extensively in Thailand, and has won the World Muay Thai title on two separate occasions. Let's go and see what Rich makes of that kick. We can kind of bait each other into, into attacks, which leads into Anderson Silva's kind of head movement, the, the, the kind of lean back defense. Oh, there he goes. There, he's out. That's it. I mean. So, shall we... Uh, Get some proper kit on and give this a roll, show yeah. us how to do it. So basically what we've got is a series of Russian dolls all like stacked inside each other. Our biggest doll on the outside is your push kick. However, there's nuances to that push kick. The, the, we can we can we can use it as a defensive mechanism, or as we've been working on, we can use it as an as an attacking mechanism as well. With it being a striking technique, we should probably have a little talk about equipment. And we've got everything in beautiful yellow and black here. Yeah, I don't know how that happened, Rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No idea. I'm imagining the belly pad is just like the key piece of equipment here. Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about how people should be using this for the front kick. Okay, so one of the things that we that we that we look at here is making sure that the the belly pad is orientated the right way around. Um, make sure that the logo's at the top because that's that's going to be the thing that kind of draws your eye and you'll spot it in your peripheral vision. Mm. Um, so when you're wearing the body pad, make sure that it's nice and nice and tight. It's good for support, good support on the back. Um, with a, with the wide straps on, and there's plenty of plenty of padding at the front. And then, I imagine that the tie pad isn't so well used for the front kick. I haven't seen so many guys. I sometimes see them put it down and kind of shield shield the kick, but I would imagine that's more for the roundhouse kick than the front kick. Or um, do you use yeah, much for the front kick? Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll use it for the push for the for the push kick, and sometimes kind of slot it on top of the on top of the body pad. Um, and then if, if we want to practice the, the, the push kick to the face, then you can hold it up as if you're, as if yeah. you're holding for a cross. We noted that Anderson's kick was kind of an uppercut. It was yeah. a front kick uppercut because it knocks Vito's head back. Would you use this to kind of allow that to happen? Yeah, so I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't hold it in, the, in front of here, obviously, because of the danger of, of, reasons, of, yeah. of getting kicked up. I mean, your legs are really powerful. And that, that's, why, that's why I knocked him out. Yeah. Um, but you could certainly hold it as a, as like as a cross, so that it's going to be on the, on the um, off that centre line. But you can still kind of get the, get the right position. And what other equipment might you use for this? Um, you mentioned a couple of things which were maybe not so obvious. Yeah, so I, I do a lot of I do a lot of drills up against the wall, so that we can so we've got a, a solid target that's not going to move, and then it really tests my own my own balance, my own proprioception, the balance on that standing leg um, and make sure that my, my head and my spine are all in the right position. And the last thing is, we would imagine that the good old six foot heavy bag gets used rather a lot. You keep this one flat on the floor and you see this a lot in Thai gyms. Yeah. Is that the reason for it so it doesn't move? Um, yeah, so it, it, it makes sure that, yes, the target's not going to move, but then when it, obviously when you... Um, Going, going through the technique, the challenge is to try and make it move. Right. Um, so the, there's, a, there's a little bit of friction there. A but it'll help with the distance and the fact that it's not, not swinging, moving. Swinging yeah. so much. Yeah. Okay, well, let's have a look at them. Okay, so the, the, the first part of the drill is doing the push kick up against the wall. Okay? Um, so we're going to start off in our, in our stance, one foot forward, one foot back. Hands, hands up as if, as, if you're, as if you're engaging. 
Okay? And then, again, remember it, four moves. So our lead leg, is, we're lifting up. What we don't want to do is give any telltales first, moving that back leg in to centre line and lift. Okay? Just lifting our lead leg with no adjustment. Okay? And then as we lift, we can do a little hop with the back leg to deliver the push kick and then bring it back and back down into our stance. Okay? And then we can do that on repetition. So we're here, a little push, 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 push. And all this time I'm getting milliseconds of testing on that standing leg to make sure that I keep my, keep my hips strong, keep my balance strong. I've, I've got good stability through the ball of, my, ball of my foot and my hands are up here. Making sure that I'm not leaning back and falling away from the technique and not over committing, falling in and, and, and compressing on the technique, okay? This is testing the, the, the range and the distance. So when I'm in position here, I'm looking for a, a straight leg as I'm holding that position. And then it's a little flex of the foot to push my leg back and then I come back down into my stance. So when we're doing this, we could be looking at doing 30, 40, 50 in a row, okay? So that we get that repetition and build the coordination. So here. And then on the other side, so if I'm gonna do push kick off, off the back leg, I'll lift and come back, or I can switch my stance, and push, 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 push. And notice I'm getting a little hot with my standing leg to cover distance. This is really refining my range awareness and my distance awareness so that it's not a raw, um, a raw distance finder. All I'm looking for is the flex in my ankle. So the flex in my ankle is actually the, the impact zone of where the push kick should be landed. And notice that I've got this little block here to make sure that I'm not going to come back lazy and drop my foot down and doing it in three moves rather than four. Pick over the top, over the top. And notice how I'm keeping my hands up even when I'm delivering a kick. I don't want to be getting into bad habits dropping my hands down. Moving it, moving it on onto the bag, okay? Obviously you don't get the same proprioception, you don't get the same pushback off the, off the wall as you do on the bag, but the, this is what's gonna really challenge the stability on the standing leg, okay? So when I'm here, I'm gonna do the push kick, and then I can use my target and make sure that I'm not falling in and closing that distance down. Again, I can go back and make sure that I've got my, 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 my little block in place to make sure that I bring my, bring my foot back and clear the block every time, okay? So, I'm in position here, push and bring it back, push, bring it back. So one of the great things about this job for any martial artist is actually going to get to train with some world-class guys and get a real insight into what you thought might have been simple techniques but when you open the book on them, sometimes they get a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna see if I can get this right. Okay, so um, for the person holding pads, we wanna make sure that our wrists are strong. So that notice how my wrists are kind of cocked in. We can use the padding on the back of the, back of the pad for, for some good stability, okay? I've got the, got the body pad on nice and tight, high up on the, high up on the, uh, on the, on the stomach, okay? and I'm rounding my shoulders here to make sure that my shoulders stay strong, okay? So first of all, so first of all, all we're gonna look for is a, a push kick off the lead leg. And then as a, as, a, uh, as a pad holder, you can practice your footwork to absorb the energy of the kick, so whether it's a little step back here or a little step back with the, with the back leg, depending on the power of the kick. So when it goes push kick, boom, I can spring, I can hold myself and come back, or push kick, and I can move and come back with this opposite stance. Okay? And then we can go with the back leg, push and move with it, up and spring 
and then I'm holding my feet in my stance because as a pad holder, you're still um, you're still engaging. This isn't a passive process. When you when you're holding the pads here, you should be in a position where you you could be you could be throwing your own technique, you could be throwing punch kick, whatever. So when we're in position here, we're delivering the push kick up and coming back. Okay, push and move back and off the back leg, push and bring it back, push and bring it back. How do you do the uppercut? Okay. okay, so this relies on the on the on the flexibility on the on the back leg and make sure that we're getting that knee high. So that's it. So just do the first part. That's it. So pretend that you're just lifting your knee up to the pad. There, a little bit higher. That's it. So when we're going here, I can lift and hold the foot. Okay, and that's what's going to give me a little bit more flexibility. That's it. Keep your chin down. So we keep that alignment in the spine. Okay, and then stick your butt out after the kick. After after you've done that knee, your leg will go where your hip is pointing. Well. And then stick your foot out, put the knee up, and back. Again, boom, and back. And then it, it's merely an extension from there. And it, it's important that we're flexing the foot, pulling the toes back, and you're trying to hit with like just behind the toes on the on the ball of the foot. So if you just come up onto the balls of your feet like this, yeah, you can feel the impact, you can feel the the, the, the area of your of your foot where you should be making contact. Okay, so you can do the push kick, there. Yeah, that feels as it's yeah. really so, so now the hip can come into it. That's it. So think about hips are back, hips forward, hips back. There we go. It's an upward kick. Yeah, very yeah, much. yeah. That's yeah. It. Good, good. I almost lost my balance. Okay, keep that chin down. <laughs> and what's for not to do with your toes? Yeah, don't do with your toes. It'll hurt. In the last video where Pete nearly broke my ribs on the Khabib video, that hurt, but right now, getting up kicked to the face, I'm really not relishing this. They hover over like crows Just like I hover over my code All hell, almighty freedom I chose Tall tales, my eyes see to my road